Hey guys, what's up? It's Jake Whip here, back for another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this super cool parallax effect. Alright, so as you can see, that looks pretty cool, and the nice thing about this is you will be able to put any photo you want under it without doing too much work at all to change it. Uh, so how we're going to do this is I've got a few photos on the bottom here, as you can see, and we're going to bring an adjustment clip down. So all the effects will be in the adjustment clip, so we can just move it over to different clips or duplicate it and paste it on top of other ones, if that makes sense. Alright, so we're going to go into Fusion, and as you can see, we can see our uh, photo in the background here, and how we're going to do this in order to make it extremely procedural is we are going to take this media in one and a background node and connect them up and have the media in one going into the background and we're just going to make that transparent so we can use it later all right and then we're going to bring down another merge and have this background go into the merge and this merge go in as the um, foreground okay then we can just connect that up. And the reason we are doing this is because we need to make a bunch of circle masks on it. So I'm going to bring down an ellipse here and draw that on just like so. And then scale this up by grabbing one of the corner, corner segments to make it so that it scales um, exactly as a circle. So I'm just going to go to about like that. And then what we're going to do is invert the ellipse. And then bring down an image plane 3D and take the merge and put it into that. Okay, and then we're going to have a merge 3D and a render 3D and hook it up just like that. Then bring down a camera and put that into the merge 3D. Then if we view the merge 3D and the render 3D, we're just going to drag the camera back until the photos edges are at the edges on the camera, just like that. And now what we're going to do is copy the merge and ellipse and paste it. Okay, and then connect it up the same way as before. And then also have another image plane 3D. We can duplicate that, I just forgot to on that one. And then on the ellipse, we're going to shrink this down about the same amount. And then bring it back. So if my Z is zero, I can do minus 0.3. And then it'll bring me right here. Okay. Okay. And then on the scale, we're just going to scale it up until there. We'll just grab the scale thing and scale it up until it is a seamless jump. So something like that. It usually snaps to it pretty well is what I've noticed. So as you can see, there is no seam. So that's exactly what we want. And now we're just going to keep repeating this process until it gets down until there is no ellipse left. All right, so I finished doing this and I have one, two, three, four, five, six different photo layers here. All right, and they're all, they're all laid out. And it's, you can tell you're doing it right if they all match up with the lines on the camera here. Um, this is its view that it can see. So if the edges touch that, that means you're doing a pretty good job. As you can see, my back photo isn't quite like that. So I can just grab the scale and move it down. Since the photo is so small, it's kind of hard to see. So this is a good way of doing it if the photo is too small and you can't really tell where it's at. All right, so this is the node setup. It's kind of crazy as you can see. I'm just gonna drag these down. I kind of like that, it's a cool effect. <laughs> Um, I've got my merge here and then my camera down here. So what I'm going to want to do is go to the first frame and put a keyframe on the Z position on the camera. Then go to the last frame and just zoom in with the camera until I get to about the end here. Alright, and then if I watch this, it's going to take a little while to render because it's rendering six instances of the photo in 3D. All right. So you can kind of see it's starting to break the parallax a little bit. 
And if you wanted, you can make it like a little more intense, like instead of doing negative minus three, uh, you can make that so that it's a little bit bigger. All right, so now this will zoom in. It'll take a little while to load, so you can uncheck high quality if you want, um, and that'll make it play back a little bit faster. Uh, we want to go into the spline editor, drag the camera over, zoom out by holding control, uh, select the two keyframes, hit F, then hit T, and you can adjust how much it eases. So if you do shift space and do drop shadow, um, and what we're going to need to do is make two of these. So the first one, the angle is going to be all the way up to 180, copy paste it, and the next one is going to be neg or next one is going to be zero, okay? And then if we select both of these and look at both of them open, okay, we need to pin one in order to do that. But that's not that hard. Right click on the shadow strength and parent that by right clicking to an expression to the first shadow strength. So let's do shadow two and shadow one. There we go. All right, so now that I have the shadows here, what I'm going to do is drag all of this back, make some space in between the media, or the merges and the image planes. And then what we can do is put the shadow right there and connect it up. So now we can preview it. All right, so that's a little bit intense. We don't want it to be that much. So I'm gonna bring it down to about, let's see, 0.1 something here. Maybe 0.2. And then we can also play around with the settings here and the distance. We don't want as much distance, I don't think. What we can actually do is go through and link all the drop distances and stuff like that. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to paste it because I'm not really going to be playing around with that too much. So there we go. And we will just copy this and connect it up to all of these. And on the next ones, then we'll have to bring the intensity down. Is what I have noticed when doing this. Something like that. Copy and paste. And then just keep repeating this process until you get something that you like. And then you do not need to put it on the last one as that has no mask and you will not be able to see the shadow. All right, so now here on the edit page, the effect is completed. It will take a little bit of time to render out uh, just because it, it is rendering six different instances of extremely high res photos. Um, but the nice thing about this is it's just an adjustment clip. So we can do some kind of cool effects here. If I just drag these over um, just like this, you could have it switch between three photos in the middle of the effect all right well thank you guys so much for watching if you guys enjoyed this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe for more tutorials in the future if you guys want to learn how to do anything else please comment down below in the description what that is and i'll see you guys next time for another video